So what is Clock Tower? So first off, I'm a complete baby with horror games. Not like, ooh, jump scare, I'm so terrified, hold me. More like, oh man, the door slammed behind me. I don't know what's up with that, but I'm out of here. Wait, wasn't this shelf over there before? You're trying to trick me, game, and I'm not falling for it. Ah! A game only needs to do so much, and my anxiety will take the league and drive that shit all the way home. Resident Evil? Nah, I can handle that. Clock Tower? I will shit my pants on this microphone. <laughs> Clock Tower was released in 1995 on the Super Famicom. I specify Super Famicom and not the Super Nintendo because this game was never released in the US initially, instead coming to the Western world as part of an updated port called Clock Tower The First Fear, which was released on PlayStation, Windows, and some sort of etch a sketch in 1997. Of course, this Clock Tower is not to be confused with its similarly titled sequel, Clock Tower, released in 1996 in Japan as Clock Tower 2, but was technically the first Clock Tower released in the States. Yep, this series got Final Fantasied in a naming convention. Clock Tower is a point and click survival horror game in which you control Jennifer, this milquetoast girl who, along with three other Madeline ripoffs, are adopted by a billionaire named Simon Barrows. They are taken to his majestic not satanic murder house by Miss Mary, the wife, maybe? Where shit gets creepy real quick with lights suddenly turning on and off, random screaming, and maybe finding your fellow adopted sister strung up dead in the bathroom. Huh, wonder how she got there. Oh my God! This ugly bastard is the main threat of the game, the Scissor Man, who will stalk you all across the mansion, trying to take a little too much off the top. The Scissor Man can pop out of boxes, random doors, the ceiling, all for the purpose of poking holes through Jennifer. And with that existential swarm of Damocles hanging above you, have fun exploring! The controls for this game are… weird. Point and click games work best with the PC because of the free moving mouse structure, and although you still control a pointer just with a control pad, you also still control Jennifer using the shoulder buttons. This can be really awkward to use when you are trying to direct Jennifer to pick up something on the table, but instead she's running full steam ahead against a wall. And oh look! Scissor Man is here to come play too. Your first time playing this game, you'll usually fall into the similar cycle. Run around, lock door, run around, lock door, pick up item, death, lock door, death. Oh, I found a key, death. What's in the fridge? Bugs. The entire game turns into a puzzle. Explore everywhere you are available to, picking up any items you can find. Use said items to either open up new rooms or solve puzzles to gain access to something useful or plot, all the while avoiding Mr. Chop Chop. One aspect of this game is there are multiple paths to follow. Depending on your actions, you can end up doing different routes through the mansion, finding different dead orphan sisters, finding different aspects of the plot, and most importantly, different endings. There are multiple good and bad endings, and thankfully the game keeps track of the ones you achieve so you can quick start your way into another playthrough to try and take a different course of action. This is, however, if you actually want to go through the game again. The controls can be super frustrating, especially when trying to avoid the Scissor Man. When Jennifer gets spooked, her portrait starts to change colors from blue to yellow, if tense, to red if she's having a full-blown panic attack. This is essentially her composure, because if Jennifer reached panic mode, yes, she'll finally move faster, but now she'll bust her ass if you run too much, and if she gets confronted by the Scissor Man, or any other horror from the mansion, including herself in the mirror for some reason, you'll have to mash the panic button to either get away or end up reaching a dead end. What amount of panic button hitting needed is kind of subjective. Just know when that portrait gets to flashing, pummel it for your life. The story ends up all over the place too. Not to spoil the entire thing, but you'll probably need a wiki after you beat the game to understand what you just played. 
However, if you don't mind some clunkiness and enjoy a tense field experience, I advise giving this game a try. And after finally beating this, I feel like I can finally move on from this childhood fear of mine. I should be good in... Uh... This game gets three scissors out of five. <laughs> Chad, I'm having fun.